What if I told you there might be thousands of tiny bugs crawling around your books, food, or even your walls right now, and you've probably never even heard of them? These aren't roaches, ants, or termites. No, these are something far smaller, creepier, and honestly, kind of gross. They're called book lice, and they may already be living in your home. To be fair, book lice aren't really lice. And no, they don't eat books. I'm not even sure they know how to read. Despite their name, they're not parasites at all. The nickname came from their early discovery in old, damp libraries and archives where ventilation was poor and mold was plentiful. People would find them swarming across bookshelves, even crawling along the spines of books in huge numbers. To the naturalists and librarians of the time, it looked like a full-on infestation, so they gave these tiny invaders the name book lice. Book lice are also known as sosids, and they are tiny, pale, almost see-through insects, usually less than a millimeter long. These wingless little specks look like dust that suddenly grew legs. They are considered cosmopolitan insects, and I will explain what that means in a minute, but here's the gross part. Book lice don't actually feed on paper. Their favorite food is fungus. That's right, mold. So if you're spotting them in your home, it's not just an insect problem. It's a moisture and mold problem. And where there's moisture and mold, you can bet other pests are not far behind. When we call an insect cosmopolitan, it means it has nearly worldwide reach. Basically, they can live just about anywhere, except the extremes, of course, like the poles, tiny islands, high mountains, or deep oceans. Cosmopolitan insects are survivors. They adapt fast and can handle a wide range of environments. Take the dubia roaches, for example. Anyone with a bearded dragon knows these roaches can be a pain to breed if the conditions aren't perfect. But book lice? They're the opposite. They'll reproduce and spread without a second thought. Cosmopolitan insects also share a few other traits. They thrive around humans, and they crank out huge populations at lightning speed. Some other examples that you may have heard include the Asian tiger mosquito, the carpet beetle, of course house flies, and bed bugs. Speaking of bed bugs, quick quiz. Which U.S. city has been crowned the bed bug capital for the past five years in a row? Drop your guess in the comments. So why are book lice so plentiful and so widespread, yet you have never seen one? Or have you? Since book lice are found on every continent, it has been difficult for scientists to pinpoint their origin, but many believe they originated in Africa due to its warm, humid climate and readily available food. Also, there is no specific date or place of discovery. It is likely book lice have been around as long as we have, but it wasn't until the 17th century and the development of the microscope that tiny insects like book lice were given much attention. So do book lice actually serve a purpose or are they just another useless creepy bug freeloading in your house? Believe it or not, they do have a role, out in nature of course. Book lice help break down mold, fungi, and organic matter. Think of them as tiny cleanup crews recycling stuff that would otherwise just sit and rot. Without insects like the book lice, mold would spread even faster and dead plant material wouldn't decompose as efficiently. But here's the catch. While they're beneficial outdoors, inside your home, they're basically screaming one thing. You've got a moisture problem. So sure, book lice might play their part out in the wild, but in your home, they're a warning sign you can't ignore. And if you want more creepy, weird, and eye-opening pest facts like this, 
make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to this channel. That way you won't miss the next time we uncover the hidden world of pests already living in your home or perhaps people living in your home and you don't even know it. So what actually feeds on book lice? Believe it or not, these little specks aren't at the top of the food chain. Their predators are just as creepy and in some cases way more familiar. Spiders will happily snack on book lice, treating them like tiny appetizers crawling straight into their webs. Then you've got ants. If a colony finds a book lice hotspot, they'll raid it like a buffet. Even certain mites prey on book lice. And then there are beetles, especially those that infested stored products like flour, cereal, grains, dried fruit, or even pet food. For them, the book lice are just another protein packed bonus crawling around the pantry. Bottom line, book lice may gross you out, but to a whole lineup of predators, they're nothing more than dinner. Oh, and if you'd like to learn more about mites, like the dust mite, check out the video link in the description. All right, let's get into some little known facts about book lice that'll make your skin crawl. First, book lice don't actually need a mate to reproduce. Some species can clone themselves through a process called parthenogenesis. Translation, one single female can kick off an entire infestation all by herself. Second, they're ridiculously fast breeders. A single generation can go from egg to adult in as little as a month if the humidity is right. That means what looks like a couple of harmless specks today could turn into thousands crawling across the walls in just a few weeks. Here's another weird one. Book lice don't just show up in old books and basements. They've been found living inside packaged food, behind wallpaper, and even inside electronics like smoke detectors and TVs. Anywhere condensation can form, and mold can grow, you'll find book lice. And get this, book lice are often mistaken for bed bugs or even termites. People panic thinking they've got a major infestation when really it's these tiny mold eating insects sending a warning signal that your home is too damp. So yeah, they're small, almost invisible, but they've got some big creepy surprises up their sleeve. So what can you do about it? Simple. If your home is damp and humid, there's a good chance that book lice are already thriving and crawling through flour and grains in your pantry, sneaking around your kid's school supplies, or hiding in the crawl space you barely dare to enter. That's where controlling humidity becomes a game changer. A properly sized, centrally located dehumidifier can help lower moisture levels that book lice need and cut off one of their favorite food sources, mold. If you think your crawl space, basement, or living areas might be too humid, Crawl Space Ninja can step in with a free inspection and a moisture control plan tailored just for your home. Don't wait for an infestation to show up. Call us today or visit crawlspaceninja.com for a free inspection. Keep your home dry, healthy, and book lice free. Thanks for watching.